Welcome back to this FISNA feature overview series here at Longway Acres. Now we created some projects and folders in our first feature overview, and now we're ready to load our first models into FISNA. Okay, so let's upload our first parts in the FISNA. Now, if I just pop over to my file system here, we'll see that I have this widget.par part file. And if I open that up in my CAD package and rotate it a bit, I'll see it's a plate of some sort with a rounded edge and some holes. Now, all I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna punch another hole in the top. So I'll just go ahead and pick somewhere in between the other two holes here and punch it in. I'm gonna save this as widget with hole.par. If I just pop back over to my file system here, I'll see both files are in there now. Two identical parts, just one has an extra hole in it. So if I go back into FISNA, I'll just click on the upload button here. And now all I have to do is select which folder I wanna upload my models into. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select the example folder one folder that we created in the last video and pick upload files. I'll select my two widget files and FISNA will upload these, process and index them along with the rest of the models in my database and then add them to that folder for viewing. So let's take a look at what happened here. So if I click on folders, because that's where I'm storing my 3D models, right? And then click on the example folder one, where I upload the two widgets to, and then click on files for a listing of all files in that folder. I will see both my widget and my widget with whole. I can also see that they have finished processing and I can even see a preview thumbnail image of the 3D models themselves, even that little extra hole in there if I look closely enough. So let's take a look at that original widget part. Now, right off the bat, I can see that FISNA gives me a really nice visualization engine. I don't need an expensive CAD license or anything here. And I can see that it looks exactly like it did in my CAD software. But let's go ahead and run our first comparison. So if I simply click on action over here to the right, and then click on match, match is going to find me other parts that are similar in geometry to this part. And what you'll notice here is that FISNA did in fact find my widget with hole part, even though we know it has an extra hole in it. And we can see to the right here, that's not a 100% match, but we can see that FISNA also did find a 100% match with this TC5A part inside of something called a deep dive demo folder. And this is simulating an actual real life experience we've heard from our customers. I have a new part, design an alternative part, but as it turns out, there's a completely different line of business. In this case, the deep dive demo business, right? That had the exact same part. In the case of doing a match, I didn't even have to specify the projects or folders. Now we'll dive deeper on that in a minute. But for now, let's go ahead and compare our widget and widget with whole parts. If I hit action and compare on the widget with whole part, what Fizz is gonna do is show me my regular widget on the left in red and the part I'm comparing to, my widget with whole part, on the right in blue and in the middle it's gonna show me a combined view and color code exactly what is different between the two parts. And this allows me to easily see the difference between these two parts. Now, in this case, it's kind of obvious because it's a big hole in the middle and we also put the hole there ourselves. But now imagine if you had thousands of parts or like many of our customers, hundreds of thousands of parts. And of course, all the variations of parts and being able to instantly see differences like this. But let's go back to the other mystery part, that TC5A inside of the deep dive demo folder. Now, we don't see 100% match because Vizna told us. But if I go under actions and select part match, so not match, part match, Vizna will now go and show me anywhere that this actual part is in use. And I can now see that the TC5A part is actually used in this hold down clamp assembly. And that visualization engine that I mentioned earlier, it even allows me to split this assembly up and I can actually see my widget right there. 
and it turns out to be the part that bolts down onto my workbench. In fact, maybe my new one with the three holes would work even better. Or perhaps TC5A has already gone through some certification process, so I'm gonna use that now in some new design so I have to worry about certifying my new product. Okay, so what actually happened here? So when we upload our model of the widget, FISNA split that model apart and sent it through a more than 50 step process to generate a unique algorithmic hash representing that widget. You may have heard me reference the FISNA DNA or PNA in the overview video I mentioned earlier. And just like every human being has its own DNA, every physical object or 3D model has its own PNA. And that's why FISNA was able to find both the widget with the hole and the other duplicate widget elsewhere in my FISNA account. And if my tractor happened to have that same widget in it somewhere, or even a fighter jet, FISNA would find it there as well. Again, we're searching 3D with 3D, not text, not a parts list or bill of materials, just pure geometry. And this is the most foundational aspect of FISNA the ability to take any part, any assembly from virtually any CAD package and generate the sea of PNA from your own parts you can then search, compare, and action against in ways never before possible. But we do still need that 2D data, right? Things like material type, compressive strength, or color. And so we've built what we call the FISNA base connector that allows you to effectively plug FISNA into your existing PLM system and keep it completely in sync with FISNA. So we can bring along all of that metadata while also making sure the geometry is kept up to date inside of FISNA. It also means you aren't having to upload models manually, but just letting these systems take care of themselves, which again, when you're talking tens or hundreds of thousands of models, becomes a virtual easy button to start getting value across all your 3D models and all your 3D assets inside of FISNA. So thanks so much for watching this product feature overview. So now that you understand projects and folders, and we've uploaded a couple of parts and shown you the basics, you're just dangerous enough to move on and check out the next episode in the series, where we'll dive even deeper into searching and comparing in 3D. That link is in the description below. And please check us out on physics.com and follow us on the social media links listed right here. Thanks again for watching.